Welcome back little coders to another video on my channel. Creative Codeling here and today we're going to be talking about context output service on Roblox Studio. Before I get started, I want to talk about what is context action service as it may be a bit confusing to understand because it's new and I'm teaching it. So context action service is similar to user input service but in but when you do it it has a different way because it includes binding so you can bind actions depending on different variants or variables when you put in the script so yeah the main goal in this video is going to be able to make it so that when you have a tool equipped it then you are able to use the action service to make this brick a different color before you get started, you want to go and go into starter pack to get a local script because we need to use a local script in order to make this work, as it is only applied to the player itself and is not going to be global and in a server script. In your server script, what you want to do is do or type local CAS, this is short for uh, context action service, is equal to game in get service let's say context action service right under that we want to get the part as a variable so we're going to do local part is equal to game dot workspace dot part now after that what we want to do is get in a function so the reason why we're getting a function for this is because we need something to be detecting or having an output for when we do the input so it's going to be a fa a function that holds if button is pressed so that when it's detected then it can go through sort of like a modification or um, a go through to another step which is the context action service to detect if a specific key is pressed. So that's how it's going to work. So we're going to do local function function and we're going to call it um, we're going to make the color yellow so we're going to turn it turn brick yellow with these brackets of course and then enter now after that, what we're going to do is type, uh, sorry, part dot color. So this is where the output's going to go through. So part dot brick color is equal to, and we're going to do brick color dot new. Oops. Let me try that again color dot new we're gonna do brackets and let's make it yellow so we're gonna do new yellow new yellow that's a color right there and that's basically it for this function here now I'm gonna move on to the context action service so we're gonna go down twice and we're gonna type CAS and we're gonna do bind action after the colon so here what we're doing is we're binding the action like I said earlier in the video so when you bind an action that means you're making it enabled imagine it like that you're enabling an action or binding it so that it's currently working so bind action so to show the things we got to put in for parameters I'm going to try that again so I can show it okay here Bind action. So first of all, we need a string action name. So we're, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It's just whatever you name it. It could be called cheese if you wanted to. I don't know what you're going to name it, depending on what you're doing. But whatever it is, is just to help as basically like a variable to so that it has something to detect, which is also going to be shown in a little bit later in the video of its use. Then function to bind. So we're binding this with the function here, local turn brick yellow, because that's going to be the output. 
So we're going to do turn break yellow for the function, and then uh, create touch button. So this is for a mobile, like um, iPhones or something like that, uh, a mobile device, not laptops or desktops. So we would want a button for that as, you know, phones, tablets, and stuff don't have keyboards. So there needs to be a way for the mobile to do it too. So you just do uh, true or false. And then uh, input types. So this would be like a letter or something or any kind. So I'm going to be using Y for yellow to do it. So I'm going to type Y in uh, quotation marks so that it is detected, you know. So now that I've planned it out, I'm going to do bind action. So like the first thing, the name, I'm going to call it yellow. We're going to do turn yellow. Gonna call it that, comma. And then the function we're doing, turn break yellow. You don't need to do the brackets or else it's not going to work. Turn brick yellow and delete those brackets. Then after that, what we're going to do is type true because this is for if we're going to show a button or not for a mobile. And then lastly, the actual input, which will be um, yellow or Y for short because we're doing one letter. So that's basically it for binding an action, but no, we're not done yet. I'm going to do a quick example to show how this is working, and then after that, we're going to do some other things. So, we're going to wait for this to load. Okay, ta-da, here I am. Don't mind my avatar. Um, so, right here, we have a shamrock color for the brick color. And now, if we click the Y button, boom, it's yellow. It has revealed itself by simply clicking a button. Get off this. Well, it's only a one-way thing, so if we click it again, it's not going to go back because we didn't type any script for that. But that's how you can see of um, the start off for uh, context action service when you bind an action. Okay, so let's say we wanted to unbind an action or stop it from working after a while. Maybe it's like a timer. If you're trying to open something before the timer runs out. Maybe you got five seconds, so we're gonna do wait five for five seconds. And then after that, we're gonna do CAS again. And we're gonna do unbind action this time. And all you need to do is type in the name. That's why we needed to put in a name so that it would know what to unbind. You might have several actions that are binded, so you need to type in the name. And you don't need to type in the other things as it's just unbinding. There's no other parameters you need. So just type in turn yellow or whatever you named it. Turn yellow. So that's basically it. Okay, here we are in the game. So we're going to wait five seconds because if I click it now, then I won't really, really be able to show you that it doesn't work because it would already be turned to yellow. So now we're going to click Y, and as you can see, it's like it's broken, but it's not because we unbinded it. So no matter how many times I click it, it's not going to turn yellow at all. So that's what the unbind action does. It unbinds the action or disables it. So that is sort of the basics for this, but I'm going to do sort of a quick mini project to show you what you can do with this, for example, um, a reload or something. If you wanted to do a reload on attacking something, maybe. So I'm going to make a part and pretend it's a person. So we're going to get a part, we're going to make it, um, how about, maybe he is a guy wearing a teal shirt or something. Let's create him. I'm gonna rotate him so that he's standing up. I'm gonna rotate him to maybe this way. So I pretend this guy is the enemy team and we are a separate team over here. And we ran out of ammo or something, so then we would, we can't shoot. Or actually no, we're not gonna do reload. That would take uh, a little bit more steps. But it's gonna make it to that when it shoots, it makes this thing red as long as it's binded. So it's gonna be binded when we have ammo. Oh no, I accidentally clicked that. Whoops. I did not mean to do that. Back to the local script. 
So, I'm gonna delete this. So I'm gonna leave this because we're gonna put it inside of another function. Or, yeah, we're gonna be putting it in a function, so we're gonna do, or, no, we have to put it, set up a tool. So, you may have noticed that I had a tool in my inventory on those other tests. Just get a basic tool, and I just put a part inside and typed it as handle, because I'm not really gonna be needing a fancy thing for um, this. I don't need no AK-47 or something. I just need a part and destroy him. That's the goal. So, <laughs> local tool is equal to script.parent dot tool. Now, under here, we're going to do tool dot tool dot equipped. and connect function I'm gonna do yeah function and then if it's equipped it then we're gonna bind it so I'm gonna do C A or no we're just gonna take this I'm gonna take this top part first drag it in and then we're gonna take in the function we don't want to put in the tool variable because that's the thing that's being used in um, this top part here, so we want to uh, keep that on the top. We're gonna just oops, and put that on top like that. So now we have the variables and the local function. Instead, we're gonna make this into really red. That's the name of a different color. Really, really red. And then under here, I'm going to do CAS. And then we're going to type bind function or bind action, sorry. So bind action, and we're going to call it oof player. Alright, we gotta put quotation marks. If player. And we're gonna do so the next part is the function, which is turn brick. We should make it red, not yellow for the name. Turn brick red. And we're gonna do Then we're gonna do true. After that, we're gonna do the thing. So how about shoot? So we're gonna do S. So quotation marks, S. So this is basically it for it to work. And then after it, because you know what, never mind. This is basically it here. I don't want to add any other crazy things to this. I don't want to make this video too long. So, to equipped. So when it's equipped, then these variables pop up, and then the function for turning the brick red, then killing the player, and turn brick red true s. There we go. So we're gonna click play. Wait a second. So there's the part over there. Sadly, he's gonna be wiped out real quick. Say goodbye, Mr. Blue. I have my weapon now. My in my hand weapon, sort of injected. Anyway, three, two, one. He was wiped out. Rest in peace. So that's it. That's how you make it so that when you equip the tool, it can. It does that. But before I end the video, I want to do two more things. I forgot to show the part where it doesn't work when you don't have it equipped. So I'm going to go down here. We're going to do. So 
I'm gonna do it without it. I'm gonna click S. Instead, it's making me go backwards because W A S D. But if I equip the tool and click S, then now it turns red. But if I do this, yeah, it's not gonna go back because he's already killed, you know. So yeah, you can't really bring it back in realistic terms. But anyway, um, now that I've done that, the other thing I want to show is that on here, if you click this button up here in the top corner, it has these little tablet and phone. Then you go into phone mode, and then now when I play, it's going to show me the game in the view of a person using a mobile device. In this case, it's an iPhone 7. So if I move around, I can... Oh, whoops, I'm using this. It's not realistic, oh no. Yeah, I've used these, but you um, got to make it mobile vibes. Okay, now we click on the tool. And as you can see, now it shows this button here, it's sort of overlapping, which is uh, okay for now, but you can fix that. I'm going to show, I'm going to put it in the description into the Willbox wiki about this, so that if you want to learn more, like changing where the button position is, but like again, I do not want to make this button super duper long, so I'm just going to leave it like this and click the button. why it's not working. Nothing different in the script, right? Yep, everything's fine. No, it should work with the button. It is true. Stuff like that. I'm not really sure why it's not working. About without it. No. Okay, this is odd. I don't know why it's not working. What if I do S? Doesn't even work with S. Weird. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's not working. I'll look into that and try to figure out what's the problem. So maybe I could do a second video about mobile t devices. But uh, for now, I hope you know how to make the CAS for. Um, laptops and desktops i will come back with another video for uh, mobile devices because i'm sorry that i couldn't make a that i couldn't figure that out something went wrong but until then i'll see you on sunday for another video about roblox studio bye